Bullfrog. Hey, 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 man, I'm here. all the believers. You know what that means. Here we go again. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Live YouTube. Chef's feed. Let's do this thing. Jeremiah Bullfrog channel coming at you guys. We're doing it live. Me and my dude Jose are going to try to entertain you this evening. We've got a few tricks in store. We're going to get a little chefy. Hey. Got myself a glass of red wine. It's a Malbec. Maybe you guys can put uh, two and two together. The dude's drinking Malbec Argentinian wine. Ah, you know what that means. We got short ribs in the house. We're doing it. Big beef episode. Wait till you see the process that goes into these short ribs. All right, y'all. Jose's going to drop a little, uh, a little intro. We'll get into it. Hey, 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 hey. Hey. Here we go. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Live. 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 Seven o'clock. Isolation station. The isolation station. What's good? You know what that means. Here we go. Here we go. go. Officially, Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Want to send a special shout out to uh, Fresh Origins, hooking me up on some uh, amazing little teeny vegetables and herbs. I'm super excited for this episode. This is like um, this is like one of those chefy episodes. We're gonna run through short ribs. Um, I was at my uh, my buddy's butcher shop down south. You guys probably know I keep keep shouting them out. Uh, Babe's Meat Encounter down in Miami. Um, you know, the funny story goes, some guy had ordered uh, 10 racks of, he had ordered 10 beef plates. And what he meant to do was order uh, 10 beef ribs. So the plate is, you know, like seven ribs. And then obviously one rib is what the guy was referring to. So surplus of beef ribs, you know, I was like, hey, Jay, what can I do? You know, what can I pick up? What's what's going to inspire me this week? What can I cook for my folks? What can we do live in the isolation station? And so there it is. It's uh, short ribs, although the bone is quite long. Um, yeah, because it does come from the short plate. Uh, therefore, it is a short rib. We've got a, a little demo for you coming up. You'll see kind of like the diagram of the cow. But the, uh, the, the short ribs sit between like what is called the plate and the ribs, uh, hence the short ribs. They are super delicious. Um, usually, most people cook short ribs quite, quite a bit. They, they kind of hammer them. You, you do like a long braise or a long smoke. You know, if you're doing Texas style barbecue, smoked beef, short ribs are amazing. Uh, you're rendering down all that, um, all that sinew and all that muscle and all that connective tissue. 
and that becomes gelatinized. Uh, usually about 140 degrees Fahrenheit is where you start to get that change in texture and, and you start to sort of like melt away. Uh, you can also do this by uh, slow and low cooking. You know, if you, you sear off your short ribs and then you braise them in like red wine, uh, that's also another method. Um, but I want to show you my version. You know, this is my show. You guys want to show everybody Bray Short Ribs, then, you know, hop on YouTube. You too can do this. But, um, we do, uh, something super, what I think is super cool. Um, it's, uh, it's a lengthy process. It involves a couple of days of prep, not gonna lie. But I've put a, um, I put a, a recipe in the description below. So you guys can check that out while you're there click subscribe give me a thumbs up drop me some comments everybody watching let me know let's go roll call right now i'm gonna take a sip of wine and you let me know that you're with me we're rocking it out it's wednesday 7 p.m me and jose doing it on the live stream let's go all right so um Argentinian style grilling or parijada, right? So Argentines have this amazing, first of all, they have amazing quality beef. If you've never been to Buenos Aires, highly recommend it. Super European city. It's kind of like a mashup of, um, I would say it's like New York and Barcelona or Barcelona. Um, you know, it's, it's a super unique city full of culture and some of the most amazing beef right very specifically beef in the world most of it is grass-fed super high quality and very very affordable you know you can have a steak like yeah with a salad some fries and a bottle of wine it's like 10 bucks us you can't beat it so buenos aires get yourself there um so we're going to take that inspiration you know there's a huge huge community of argentinians in miami so you know, we have all these uh, Argentinian grills. It's called parijada. The grill is called a parija or a, um, yeah, a parija. And so the act of cooking on the grill is parijada. You can get yourself like a sampler plate that usually comes with a couple of different cuts, uh, some sausages, uh, some sweetbreads, and it's lights out good. My favorite cut from this plate, from the parijada, is the short rib. Uh, asado de tira. So the Argentines take short ribs and they grill them off high heat. Usually it's a flanken style cut on the short rib rather than come and go with the bone and you have a nice long cube of meat. Um, they take it and cut across it. And so you have these thinner slices, probably like an inch and a half thickness and they have small little bones. The bone has the marrow, the bone has all the flavor. When you're cooking beef on bone, you cannot beat the flavor. So taking this idea of the Argentine um, parijada, the asado de tira, taking grilled short ribs, how do we make that into Jeremiah Bullfrog style? So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna make a nice little sauce. Traditionally, they would rock out a chimichurri, which is um, a very bright, meaning acidic, well, uh, like a salsa, it's a puree of herbs, uh, really good olive oil. Sometimes they make it a little spicy, but, um, but we're rocking it uh, a little different. We're gonna do somewhere across between a chimichurri and what I call salsa verde, and salsa verde is just uh, green sauce. Um, you know, there's an Italian version, there's a Mexican version, and then there's Jeremiah Bullfrog version. So you know which one we're gonna do tonight. Uh, and then uh, I just want to say shout out to Naza, shout out to Len, appreciate y'all joining me. Anybody else who's in the house, please drop it below, let me know. We're going to interact. If you've got any questions, if you need to see something again, if the recipe in the description, you know, you need a, a couple of pointers on there, let me know. And uh, Jose, let's, uh, let's get Hey Shorty. What's the deal of the week? In this case, this week in the case get it apparently some dude ordered 10 plates of ribs so the short rib comes from the beef plate it's nestled in between the rib section and the plate as you can imagine if you do the math on that it's quite a lot 
that cut that just didn't move for whatever reason. Marketing, it's usually marketing. In this case, short ribs, yet their bones are quite long. They do come from the short plate. So what do you do with all that bone? You can't really cut it with a knife. Tomahawk, shorties, it is. A tomahawk cut is an overly large bone on a delicious size steak. Everybody always takes short ribs and they braise them, they cook them too long, or they smoke them forever. I get it, you wanna break down all that connective tissue, turn it into soft, delicious, gelatinous, tender morsels. Everyone always blasts these babies for way too long. They put them in a liquid to break down all that tissue into collagen. I prefer to sizzle them instead. With high heat, the marbled meat gets a delicious crust, not unlike a smash burger. With low and slow comes a tender morsel. Put them both together and what do you get? Smoked, then chilled tomahawk short ribs with kale salsa verde. And there it is. That's the short rib process starting. So you can see those beautiful uh, long bones that we got from, from Babe. Um, you know, it's a Baranosaurus chop about yay um, with beautiful couple of inches right across, amazing marbling. Um, you know, short ribs do have the, the sort of sinew or the, the connective tissue um, that, that holds the, uh, the, the meat to the bone. Um, so I like to kind of peel that down. Uh, so the star of the show is the short rib on the bone. Um, so what we did, the, uh, the quick, quick version, and you're, you're going to see all the steps here, is we, I took the, the short ribs, I butchered them down, I sort of Frenched the bones, right? So you got a clean bone. And then the off cut are these little suckers. So this is the tail off the bone. They're all about the same size. And... This is just like a boneless short rib. I, I didn't clean these up at all. I just left all that beautiful fat on there. And so I just want to bag these up. I'll season them. I'll get these in a sous vide bath just so we can start talking about sous vide cookery or low temperature cookery. Uh, I think it's very important. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge technique for me. Um, you know, I've been rocking it out for, for quite some time. So I thought it was a perfect way to kind of ease you guys in. No need to be scared of the old uh, sous vide or low temperature cooking. Um, originally they developed immersion circulators for the laboratory. Uh, it holds a, um, it holds temperature to like a tenth of a degree. Um, and the way we utilize that is we cook things real, real slow and even in a bath. Uh, when you're doing beef per se, uh, you'll see you can get perfect, medium, rare, uh, edge to edge. You don't have any sort of like gray spots. Um, so we took the, you've seen it so far. We took the beef ribs, we butchered them. I have the tails here, seasoned them up, bagged them. And so now here's the next step. Uh, I just wanted to, to run down real quick, a little live live. So y'all are with me. Uh, if you guys have ever tried a little sous vide cookery for your own, uh, drop it in the comments and let me know what your favorite thing to do is. Uh, I know for me, uh, egg cookery is a big one. Uh, doing these short ribs is super cool too. Um, I'm going to try this real quick. I'm going off script and I'm going to try to pan down here. Jose, let me know if we're, uh, if we're doing okay. But I thought maybe this is just like an easier... Um, Easier little thing to show you these beef ribs. I'm just going to season them up with salt. Um, let me see if I can give it a little twisty twist like that. And then like this. All right. Well, all the technology in the world, sometimes you just got to twist yourself. We're doing yoga here on the old live stream. So we've got the beef ribs. I'm just seasoning them up with salt. Just wanted to make sure you guys see it's quite a bit of salt. And we'll get some black pepper on these babies as well. And then I'm going to bag these up. And then so, you know, you'll get a little, uh, you'll get a little, uh, a little tutorial on the old, uh, yeah, how's that? All right. 
so we're back. Just a quick pan down, nothing crazy. Uh, Jose's gonna yell at me because I messed up the shot, but that's all right. All right. So salt, we'll grab a little black pepper. Uh, black pepper is one of those things I like to hammer my beef with, um, especially if you're not going in a super hot pan right away. Um, you know, black pepper and beef go hand in hand. Uh, so I like to just get a, a really good layer on there. So we're seasoning up our short ribs, guys. I've got these little boneless suckers. I'm going to drop them in a bag. And we're just going to run through the process of sous vide cookery. You know, again, it's it's been, you know, it's something that started in the lab. It made its way to the kitchen. Um, and now with the advent of more and more immersion circulators, they're becoming super affordable. Um, I actually picked one up. This is in no way a, uh, uh, I'm not uh, repping a Nova at all, but I picked up this little sucker uh, right off of uh, Amazon and it's like a hundred something bucks and it fits in, what I like about this one is it fits in these little containers. Um, so you don't need an overly large um, like Cambro or, or overly large container. You know, you got whatever you're cooking, you pop it in a bag, or you can use a Ziploc, you can go directly into the water, you can use different mediums, you can cook right in red wine, you can cook in fat, like whatever whatever liquid you want, you can, you can rock it out. So we're gonna bag these suckers up. Super, super easy. Hope everyone's with me so far. Just a little sous vide tutorial on the old uh, short ribs. The short ribs are, they're, they're real cool. Because what you can do with this, right, they're all bagged up, is you can rock the temperature real, real low. Uh, so, so my short ribs I'm doing uh, 57 Celsius, about 133, 135 Fahrenheit. And that's a perfect medium rare. Um, if y'all like rare, you can go lower. You can go to about 54 Celsius or um, like 120 Fahrenheit. Whatever temperature you want your beef, right, to finish is what you cook it at in your water bath. That's the way that sort of science works uh, because it doesn't go over that temperature. You can leave it in there for literally, quite literally, you can leave your short ribs in for three days. Uh, and it just keeps breaking down those connective tissues and makes it a little more tender. So that's the trick here to, to these ribs. And then we're just going to drop them in the old water bath and uh, set up the circulator. I'll have it going in the back while uh, we continue the journey of the short rib. Jose, let's take a look at uh, Hey Shorty Part 2. Shorty part two, or did you jump the gun, my man? Okay. Oh, yes, correct, correct, correct. My bad, calling Jose out, and it was my bad, I forgot. Uh, I went one extra step, you know, it's uh, Jeremiah Bullfrog here. I'm, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna pull any punches. I, I wanted to take it to the next level. I wanted to make the best short rib possible. Yes, you are in this realm. We are crossing through the fourth wall, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm bringing my A game for y'all. Uh, are you gonna maybe try these short ribs? Probably not, but I want you to know that I tried to just knock it out of the park. So I took the short ribs, seasoned them up, we broke them down, and I smoked them. Um, 
Here's a, you know, if you guys have the grill outside, the weather's beautiful now. Set up a nice, uh, a nice little fire. What I like to do is I like to take a, uh, an old gas grill. It's a little, a little hack for you guys. Um, and I, I use nice oak chunks, start them. I light them with a torch, get them going real good, and then just cover it. And that oak, it just burns beautifully and produces a ton of smoke. It doesn't raise the temperature very high, which is what we want. So the idea behind these short ribs is we want to serve them medium rare. The final product is going to be like a steak like you've never had, full of just unctuous, gooey, smoky, delicious beef quality. So, yeah, Brian, if you've got a pellet smoker, yeah, go for it. I don't know if if those smokers have a real low temperature, like for cold smoke. Um, you know, I knew a lot of them on the market do now. Um, maybe you've got yourself a Traeger and it goes real, real low. You can set it to also 120 Fahrenheit and you're keeping in that same range. Um, the one thing is after you sous vide your, or after you break down your meat, you want to chill it. After you smoke your meat, you want to chill it. You're going to see every process here over the last three days is chilling. So we keep the temperature consistent. We're making sure these beef short ribs are out of the temperature danger zone. So they're safe to eat at all times. Uh, you know, just a little food safety science there. So just in the back here, uh, I think you guys can see that, right? I've got the, I just put it back here. It's more convenient for me. I uh, went ahead and set the temp at 134. Uh, it's super easy. All you gotta do is push play. Uh, this little sucker also has an app um, on the phone. So, you know, you can like go away and check the temperature or if you need to set it, or sometimes you do these little changes to your cook. Uh, sometimes you start real high and then you drop down low. Guys, I don't wanna overwhelm you with sous vide cookery here. This is just an entry little, entry little way. You know, if you guys have a sous vide cooker, if you have a low temperature cooking device, let me know. Let's talk about it. Tell me what your favorite recipe is. But this is, uh, this is one of the good ones, short ribs. It's worth the price of entry, promise. All right. So moving, moving uh, right through this thing, I definitely wanna show you guys uh, some cookery. You know, um, I want to make um, I want to make the garnishes for our short rib dish. Um, it's going to be a super delicious short rib dish. You know, the short ribs are smoked and then they're charred. That beef is it's got a lot of fat in it. You know, it's 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 really unctuous. Um, so to cut that fat, I like to do this sort of like chimichurri. Um, Oh yeah, so Neza, we got a little a little red wine, a little Malbec. If you weren't with us at the top of the hour, uh, you know we're doing beef, so uh, you know red wine goes hand in hand. You know, haven't had a glass of red wine in a while. I'm not gonna lie, and I'm enjoying it. It's a Malbec, and it's Argentinian. So yeah, Lenny is gonna go for the old short rib recipe this weekend. Go for it, my man. Let let me see. You know, post that sucker up. Let me see how you're doing. Uh, and then, you know, again, guys, you could change the temperature to whatever you like. You don't like your beef medium rare, you know, crank it up to, to medium. Uh, if you don't like medium, you can go medium well. If you like well done, then just braise your beef. You know, let's be honest. Or just smoke it for a long time or just grill it for a long time. Eh, I'm not going to judge you, but, you know, uh, try things medium rare or medium. Uh, all right. So, uh, Jose, can we check uh, Cam 2? This is always, always the fun part of the, of the evening, checking on Cam 2. Okay, there we go. As you can see, I got the food processor. You can go back up on one. Um, so, I'm going to do this. Whoa. All right, that was interesting. I'm going to rock out this... Uh, this uh, salsa verde recipe with you guys. And then we'll we'll go over to cam two so you guys can look down onto the food processor. Um, this one's a real easy sauce to put together. I like to make kale salsa verde. Um, you know, again, this is kind of like a cross between a chimichurri 
um, and a salsa verde. Uh, the, the secret to my salsa verde, if you take a look in the description below, I like to use a little fish sauce. Um, salsa verde, the Italian style or, or the style that we're kind of like mimicking, uh, uses anchovy. Uh, it's anchovy, it's some garlic, I like to put some shallots in there. Um, and then I love to use raw kale. Um, I feel like I kind of pioneered this recipe, um, man, it was almost 10 years, no, it was about 7 years ago. Um, I needed a sauce for a pasta dish and I had a ton of kale on hand and I threw it in the food processor and it came out pretty delicious, almost like a pesto. Uh, and I've just been using that same riff um, over the years. Uh, if you heard that, that's the circulator coming up to temperature and you could just let that sucker ride. Um, and so while those um, short ribs are cooking, I'm gonna start breaking down this uh, kale. I'm just gonna destem it, we'll give it a quick chop. We'll throw it in the food processor, and we're gonna get a nice chunky salsa while uh, while you guys take a look at uh, Hey Shorty Part Three. in a uh, little easy installments here if you're just tuned in you're probably sort of freaking out right now because I'm waving parsley at you um, so yeah back to the old salsa verde you've seen three steps of the short ribs so you guys have a really good idea of where it's going um, and now I want to just take the time to show you this sauce real quick because it's pretty awesome. Um, it goes perfectly with any kind of grilled meat. Uh, you can also use it as a, um, you can use it as a sort of like a marinade for your meat. Uh, you can most definitely throw it on some pasta. It's pretty versatile. Um, somebody was asking, it's probably just Jose, <laughs> uh, no, no vacuum seal on the ribs. Uh, you don't have to vacuum seal. If you have a vacuum sealer, great. Um, I actually don't have mine in, in, the, uh, in the isolation station anymore. So, um, you know, if you have like a food saver vac, you could most certainly do that. Sous V means under pressure, uh, and that comes from a vacuum sealer that sucks out all the, uh, all the air um, and helps you cook uh, under pressure. But uh, if you don't have one, that's okay. You know, I wanted to show you, you guys don't need that. All you really need is the circulator and you're holding your water bath. So I'm just gonna start uh, rough chopping my herbs so it's gonna look a whole lot nicer in the food processor. And it just does a little of the work. Um, it takes out a, a little work of the food processor. Um, I'm chopping up the kale real rough. Nothing crazy here, guys. Um, you know, just a rough chop into, into smallish sort of pieces so that the sauce comes together um, a little easier. So this sauce is not an emulsion per se, right? We're not uh, emulsifying, um, we're not emulsifying, you know, fat into like, um, into the water or, or into like the vinegar. It's kind of like a broken or just a chunky sauce. Um, and I love that texture with this dish. It's one of those sauces you can kind of like pick up on your fork, or you can most certainly coat your, your beef short ribs with it. Um, and it's got an awesome texture and just a little shallot here uh, and some garlic. 
Uh, you know, there's the recipes down below. If you guys have any questions, now will be the time. Uh, Y'all are pretty quiet this evening. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, I know the world is gone crazy again, especially here. It feels like we're the epicenter uh, in South Florida. I just want to go ahead and apologize to the rest of the world for, uh, for that. Uh, I wear a mask, so um, yeah, let's just be smart about it, right guys? Um, so back to it, we don't want to get too, uh, we don't want to get too much into it, right? Um, and so again, you know, playing on the chimichurri, you want all that nice bright acidity to, to lighten up the, the, the beef short ribs. And we're going to get going. Uh, Jose, let's take a look at uh, cam two real quick. All right. Is that looking good, uh, Jose? How we doing, my man? I forgot to ask how you're doing today. Yep, cool. All right. So I'll try to make it quick uh, on the old food processor, and we'll keep going. I've got all my, uh, I've got all my mise en place ready. I've got my, my lemon. Actually, I've got a lime as well. I've got my oil um, ready to go. On the oil, you want to use a larger part of the oil as a neutral oil. I prefer grapeseed. It's got great mouthfeel. And so this is how easy this is. Load this baby up with the kale. Uh, here's a little bonus uh, tip for you guys. I like to use raw spinach. This is just some raw baby spinach. Um, it makes the sauce super, super bright. Um, I just, I love raw spinach. It's kind of got a neutral flavor. It doesn't have much bitterness. The kale does have quite a bit of bitterness to it. Uh, and so we're going to have to counter balance that with the acid and with some salt. Uh, and I'll just kind of run the machine and we'll take it from the top. Um, and so I've just done this a hundred times. So I go ahead and throw in my shallot and my garlic ahead of time. So it all kind of gets to be the same size. Um, and you could start it. I like to start it with some salt from the get. Uh, it does take quite a bit of salt, not gonna lie. Again, you gotta counter, counter balance that bitterness from the kale, that's what salt does. So here we go. We're going straight in, and we're just gonna turn it on. We're gonna let it run. Right, so what was that, like 45 seconds uh, on the first try? Uh, just to make it into a nice, even, um, it's not really a puree because you're just doing a nice, fine chop. Uh, let's go to camera one real quick. This is probably a better shot. Uh, if you could see that texture, it's all kind of chopped up into the same. Um, can you most definitely do this by hand? Yeah, can you do it on a mortar pestle? Yes. Uh, it's not a blender sauce, because it's not a puree. Uh, you could do it, it's just a different sauce. Um, Jose, how's the lighting on cam two? I feel like we're a little dark. Is it coming out okay, or? Pretty dark, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. This is still like the old Achilles heel of the show. Um, so not to bore you, let's just keep it up here and I'll, I'll talk you through the steps. Uh, we've got our oil. Uh, you're not gonna need all this, so I'm gonna go ahead and add half. I'm gonna squeeze in the, uh, I'm doing a lime. I have a lemon, but I'm gonna do some lime um, to start getting that acidity. And then, you know, pro tip, I like to do the oil first. It puts a little coating on all the greens. Um, sometimes if you add an acid straight to some greens, it does tend to um, to want to start to break it down. Uh, 
Jose, if that shot is shit, let's just let's just call it a day on cam two. Um, I'll work on getting better on the old technology for you guys. Um, so the oil is in, it's starting to come together. I'm going to taste it real quick. Mmm. The garlic's perfect. Shallot's coming through. I'm getting a touch of bitterness, but, um, I think the salt level is there. I'm gonna hit it with a, a lot of black pepper. Um, I do like a little black pepper spice on this. Um, if you have crushed red pepper, I think a pinch of that goes well. But you get all the um, herbaceousness from the parsley. It's like, it almost has like this grassy um, thing. Hold on real quick while... Sorry, while that's running, it doesn't even make sense for me to be talking. Um, I'm going to hit it with just a touch more oil. And I've got a little white vinegar. Uh, just to bring up that acidity level. We'll hit it again. So when you start to get that, that, nice, that nice puree happening... Um, sometimes all you really need to do um, is just kind of like keep checking it, right? And you just want a nice, it's, it's, uh, it kind of holds together on the spoon, right? Um, if you guys have never had like a chimichurri before, it's in between like a solid and a liquid state. And that's, that's the best way I can describe it. It should definitely hold up on the spoon. Uh, and it's a beautiful texture. So, uh, where are we at, guys? It does taste pretty delicious. I'm going to hit it with the rest of this lime. Bring out that acid. And then, uh, Jose, why don't we uh, look at some, uh, some rib tunes? How about that? Keep everybody on their toes. When I grow up, I want to go to Bovine University. Anybody gets that reference, I'll send you a free booze block. Uh, it's one of my favorites. I'll give you another little little hint. Keep you guys on your toes. Hi, I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such self-help videos as... All right, there's two clues. First person to comment... Uh, what, uh, what that's from, I'm going to send you a booze block in the mail. So the salsa verde is done. Oh yeah. So again, the, uh, the, the trick or the spin on it, the twist on the salsa verde for me, I don't use the anchovies. I like to sneak in a little fish sauce. Um, I've got this, uh, this really awesome bottle. Um, that I keep in the back back so nobody gets to it. This is Bliss fish sauce. Um, first, it's made by Red Boat. Um, it's made in, I believe it's made in Vietnam still. But it is a, it's super potent, but it's it's got this smoothness to it. Uh, if you've ever had fish sauce, it, a lot of times it's like overly pungent. Um, and so this one has been... Um, aged in barrels 
Um, it's actually small batch bourbon, bourbon barrels. You guys can get this from Bliss Direct. They're awesome people um, in Michigan. And so I like to just uh, finish it with a little spoon of this and it adds that umami-ness to it. Um, it just sort of takes it from, you know, from just being a regular sauce to making it into something just sort of magical. And, um, and it goes well with, with, uh, with beef, you know? Don't be scared of fish sauce, guys. It's a pretty awesome ingredient to have in the pantry. And so on the sauce, you could just see, it's got a great texture. It holds in the spoon. Uh, it is, it's kind of like a little broken. That's, that's the idea of it. Uh, but nice, nice and chunky. And so sauce is done, right? Uh, I showed you guys some, uh, some sous vide cookery. Showed you guys, uh, some of the old uh, salsa verde. You guys learned a new sauce. Uh, and um, I think what we're going to do is start to sear off our beef, right? So I've got these beautiful short ribs. Jose, I think we're just going to do our little, uh, we'll just do our, our little manual down shot again. Uh, I'm going to try it out real quick to see where we're at. Um, I'm a little lost myself. Okay, there we are. All right. Um, so we'll line up the pan so you guys can kind of see it while I'm cooking. Jose, just give me a nod when we're there, bro. All right. Okay, cool. So we're just going old school. Um... We've just got the um, we've got the old stainless pan, and we got the old jet burner here. Uh, maybe this will be better. So what we'll do is we'll just fire it up, and we'll get our pan nice and hot. This is a beautiful um, stainless steel pan that's got a nice thick bottom, uh, so it doesn't wobble around on the old. Uh, on the old burner. And let's take a look at these short ribs, guys. Um, we've got the short ribs going. So it's sort of like the piece de resistance. Uh, all that work that I did over three days, uh, I butchered them down, I smoked them, I cooked them sous vide. Now all we gotta do is crisp them up. It's already cooked, it's perfectly medium rare. And so to finish it, uh, you could do them on the grill is great. You know, if, if, you, if you've got an outdoor grill, you wanna fire it up, some nice wood, uh, some charcoal. Um, or listen, if you're indoors, you can, you can throw them in the oven. Look at this bad boy though, huh? Smells amazing. Again, it's been chilled. So all that process, it doesn't even need to be seasoned again because it, it's seasoned perfectly. Um, so the pan's getting nice and hot right now. So I'm going to go ahead and sear this baby off. It takes a couple of minutes. So Jose, how we looking there, dude? Good. All right, maybe we're finally getting it. And I'm just going to hit it with a little, little oil. And then, you know, it's a hot pan. And so all we're looking for on the pan is for the oil to sort of like shimmer. And it looks like Neza got it. The Simpsons, that is the reference for Bovine University, Troy McClure. Congratulations, you got yourself a booze block. Uh, we'll hit you up later and make sure we get your address and we'll ship you a beautiful wood cutting board from booze block. And so here we are, test your pan. It's not quite hot yet. Let's crank this sucker back up. Let's have a little red wine while we're waiting. We're all gloved up. Neza, shout out to you. You got yourself a booze block. I'm like the uh, Oprah Winfrey of cutting boards. You get a booze block, you get a booze block, you get a booze block. 
So Lenny, on the short ribs, they have been chilled again. Uh, if you see this process after, every time you cook it, you're chilling it down. Uh, this specifically needs to be chilled uh, so that you're not bringing up the internal temperature. You want now just to bring up the outside temperature, crisp it up again, and you're good to go. Uh, medium rare is literally a temperature, uh, so it's 120, no, it's 130, 135 degrees internal temperature, and that means it should just be, it's, it's cool to the touch, it's, it's not hot. Uh, well done is hot to the touch. Uh, rare is cold, cold to the touch. So it's important that, you know, we keep up these temperatures. And then so uh, in we go to the hot pan. We're just going to get a real nice, good sear again on the outside of the meat. So I'm just going to control my flame a bit. It's smoking up pretty good here. And then the cool thing about these handles is you can turn it over super easily. And I'm just getting all sides of it again. You know, the, the bones, the, the beef is already cooked, right? We've already done all that hard work. So all we're doing, again, guys, is we're just bringing up the temperature of the outside of the meat. It's getting a nice, a nice little sear again. You want to make sure you keep turning it on all sides. You want to make sure that... It gets its love. And so I just happen to have a little a little butter. If you're doing it in a pan, you know, why not do it right? So we'll throw a little cold butter in there. And then we can start to baste it. So this is just a little extracurricular on the uh, on the beef ribs. So Jose, while I finish this sucker up, let's see it. Hey Shorty, part four. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lift up. There it is, guys. Right? Looking pretty good. What do you think? Fired up the old grill. Crisped up the old uh, short rib there. And um, and my short ribs here, they're ready too. I've just got it waiting to slice to welcome you all back. I want to appreciate everybody uh, for, for hanging. And then, as always happens, I need to make a couple little adjustments. Because I'm not supposed to be moving cam one. Sometimes you got to break the rolls, even in live streaming. Um, so, let me see here. All right, I'm just going to start taking it to the plate. I'm going to go ahead and start slicing the beef. And, uh, and we're going to plate this sucker up. And I'm most left, definitely going to have short ribs for dinner tonight. Uh, I've been lubing myself up with a little red wine. 
kind of starving, I'm not gonna lie. Ready for some short ribs. So here we go, guys. Dish is coming uh, to a completion. Um, I've got a couple of super cool garnishes from uh, from sh from um, from Fresh Origins out in California. Uh, my people have uh, always taken care of me. I've got these teeny little little baby parsnips. I went ahead and put a um, I put a recipe for parsnip puree. One of my favorites goes really well with short ribs. I'm gonna throw these right into the short rib pan. You don't even need to cook these. You can you can definitely eat them raw. But those will sort of just heat up. And then I've got a bunch of of beautiful beautiful baby kale. All different colors. Um, and size leaves. These are so beautiful. Uh, the really cool thing about Fresh Origins is um, all their little veg, you can eat the whole thing. Um, super, super delicious. Like Philly kale. They've got stuff that I've kind of never seen before. So I'm just throwing all these different types of kale into a little bowl. And I'm gonna toss it with that salsa verde, right? And start to make um, start to make a little quasi salad, so we have a nice little garnish for our short ribs. This is a, we're, we're going for it, guys. This is a, this is a real nice chefy dish. But you guys can make it at home. I got faith in you. Uh, check out these suckers. These are like little little teeny. I love these things. I've got them in purple too. These are these are the crowns from the kale. You're like this is how it grows, and it just has that teeny little stem on it, and they're super delicious. I'm gonna cut some of those in half, just like that, and I'll throw those in the salad as well. And I've got the parsnips. If you guys want to rock out a parsnip puree, go for it. Uh, parsnips and short ribs, you can't, you can't be beat. You know, it's like a $42 plate in most major cities. Um, and then I've got these real, real teeny, teeny tender leaves. Um, we're not going to put those in the salad. We're going to just put those on top. I've also got some teeny, teeny little, little Italian parsley. Um, you know, these are sort of like what they call microgreens, or this is like uh, the petite stage. Um, man, oh, it's so good. I'm gonna put a little in my salad, and I'm gonna save a little to also go on top, because they're real nice and tender. And then, um, and that's it, guys. Let's, let's take it to the plate. Jose's gonna help me line up this shot one more time. We're bringing it home. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up. Short ribs on the live stream. Didn't hammer them. Didn't braise them. Sous vide cookery. Wait till you see this sucker. Medium rare. All right, let's take a look downtown. Jose, how's that looking? All right. Um, so I'm going to hit it with a little salt. And then uh, I'm just going to hit it with a spoonful of salsa V. And then, uh, like I told you guys before, I, I saved myself half a lemon. And so I'm just going to hit this little salad. It's already got the, the beautiful salsa, so it's got tons of oil. I just want to hit it with a little more brightness. We'll just put this together, one, two, three. Super, super simple, right? Can't be beat. You've got a beautiful product. We made an awesome sauce. I can already smell that garlic and that shallot coming through. I'm gonna taste a little. Mmm, 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 mmm. Crispy, it's crunchy. It's oh so delicious. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start building myself a little bed for my grilled meats. 
you can see these little kale crowns. They remind me of Brussels sprouts, but you can eat these things raw. It doesn't have as much sulfur in them because they grow them to just like that little baby stage. Got the purple ones in there. How are we looking, guys? Are we looking good? What do you guys think? Are you excited to see the short rib? Talk to me, guys. Let me know you're alive. We're taking it to the knife. We're going to go ahead and slice it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the plate with a little salsa V. Nothing fancy, nothing schmancy. Just all kinds of goodness. Uh, yeah, if you got if you don't have some kale, you can most de definitely use some spinach. Um, trying to think what other you can use Brussels sprouts. Um, Brussels sprouts make a great slaw as well. And so here we go, slicing up the beef shorty. Wait till you see this bad boy. It is something to behold. Got a wicked sharp knife. Look at that. Perfectly medium rare. All that marbled goodness. That bone, you know that bone's going straight away. Shout out to Michelle. She knows what's up. And so let's go ahead, guys. Let's take it to the plate. Wrapping it up. Jeremiah Bullfrog cuts it up live every Wednesday. Check me out next week. I think we're going to rock out uh, Noodle Head Part 2, guys. We could do a little stuffed pasta. Drop it in the comments. Let me know if you guys have uh, something you want to see. But here we go. Short ribs getting plated up. Can't forget these parsnips. Look how beautiful. I'm going to take a little butter from the pan right over the top, boom. Just a little more salsa verde, right on top. And now, just to finish it off, I've got this little baby parsley, right? Look how beautiful this is. Come on guys. Hit me in the comments. Let me know. Jose, what do you think, my dude? Did we take it up a notch with the chefery or what, man? A beautiful piece of art on the live stream. There it is. Does that look like 42 bucks? Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, guys. What do you think? Huh? Let's take a look at this bad boy. Wow. I don't know. I think we outdid ourselves. I think we have. Brian knows what's up. There it is. 42 bucks. Smoked, chilled, sous vide, cooked overnight, short rib, finished on the grill. Shout out to Fresh Origins for all the fresh herbs and that beautiful kale. I'm going to take a nice little bite. Check out my Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I post the beauty of this bad boy. Mmm. 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 Lights out good. There you have it. Y'all can rock out short ribs too. Try something different. It doesn't have to be braised doesn't have to be cooked to death y'all can rock it out like a steak have a little red wine mm. cheers y'all appreciate it i'll catch you next week thank you